3,000 feet of pure rock looming over Yosemite Valley. Every year, hundreds of climbers try to climb El Capitan. This granite monolith is considered by many the climbing mecca, and for Tim Klein, Jason Wells, and Kevin Prince it was no different. They weren't first-timers, and they already had multiple ascents of that massive rock wall under their belt. But no one could have expected the tragedy that unfolded on that summer day of 2018. Tim Klein was a 42-year-old teacher working at a public high school. With his wife, JJ, they had two sons and lived about an hour away from Los Angeles. It was a climb like many they had done before. It was so common for the two to climb El Captain that Jason Wells would often stash clothes and gear at Tim's home in preparation for future ascents of the massive granite wall. Tim and Jason climbed together in Yosemite so frequently, around eight weekends a year, that the arrangement made sense. They were best friends and they both shared an insane passion for rock climbing. The one thing that united them, however, also broke them apart. After their first Yosemite trip, Jason and Tim began climbing together regularly, tackling classic short valley routes like the Stack South, eh? the Washington Column, the Rostrum, and Astroman. They quickly realized that their priorities and climbing strengths aligned, making them a formidable team. Tim loved aid climbing, a climbing technique that involves using tools like ladders and ascenders to move up the rope on particularly steep or overhanging sections of rock. By contrast, Jason was much happier climbing with a more traditional style, with his ends touching the rock. Both men were naturally fast and had a similar tolerance for risk. Each had extraordinary endurance, and when they took a weekend to climb, they wanted to maximize their time on the rock before rushing home to their families. Unfortunately, they didn't know yet that this time they wouldn't come back. On this trip, they planned to tackle two El Capitan routes in two days, the Salate on Saturday, June 2nd, and the Nose on Sunday, June 3rd. The Salate is perhaps the most logical big wall of El Capitan. Every pitch has its own story to tell, and it's marked by good belays. The route is 35 pitches long and they are spread across a length of about 870 meters. The nose route, on the other hand, is the most iconic route of El Capitan, possibly the most famous climb in the world. The nose is the route. It marked the era of big wall climbing in Yosemite and is a true work of art, audacity and tenacity. To most climbers, the mission the two wanted to attempt would sound impossible, but for Tim and Jason, it was routine. While teams often take between three and five days to scale El Capitan's 3,000 vertical feet of smooth granite, Tim and Jason usually summited in seven or eight hours. Occasionally, they turned around and scampered up El Cap a second time in the same day, an impressive achievement for two recreational climbers in their 40s with families and intense careers. It was the 2nd of June 2018 and the good weather meant it was going to be a good climbing day. That morning, Tim and Jason woke up early and quickly headed towards the wall. On their way there, however, they stopped to pick up another friend, Kevin Prince. While Tim and Jason usually climbed as a pair, this time they had invited Kevin, a medical resident who Tim had met in 2009 when he was part of the Yosemite search and rescue team. The trio reached the base of El Cap just after the first light, before most of the other parties. Their chosen route that day was the Salate. Tim and Jason 
knew the route in every detail, having summited more than 30 times together and once with Prince. The three men set up their gear and began their ascent at around 6.30 am, climbing while the sun had just gone up on Yosemite Valley. The style the team used was unusual and Kevin Prince described it as the caterpillar style. This meant that they were all tied together by two ropes and they alternated the belayer and the climber every pitch. Thanks to this way of climbing, they were able to climb at an incredibly fast pace and without using too much stamina. Deep down, Tim and Jason knew they would never break a speed record on El Captain, but they climbed fast to enjoy more of the beauty of Yosemite Valley. The climb proceeded well, with the team working in harmony. At around 7.30 am, the three men met another party climbing up the same route and exchanged a few words. The team in front of them was climbing without aid and being slower, they offered Tim, Jason and Kevin to pass them, but they refused. After following for about 20 minutes, the climbers in front of them stopped the rest and the trio passed them and went on with their climb. As they did for the whole time, Tim and Jason were climbing in front, while Prince was following from behind. It was 8.05 am when the tragedy took place. It took just a few seconds for Prince to look above him, where he had just heard some weird noise, but what he saw would scar him forever. Prince was still working his way up the half dollar, a section of the route, when he poked his head out just to see two men falling attached by a rope. Tears rushed to his eyes while he rushed to the nearest anchor, rapidly calling 911 for rescue. The two men fell for a time that seemed to last forever and disappeared at the base of El Captain. To this day, it is unclear what caused the two climbers to fall, but all we can do is speculate on what could have happened. When Prince arrived at the top of the half dollar, he found that the rope connecting him to Tim had been untied and left fixed to a piece of protective gear wedged into the rock. This suggests that Tim had to continue up the wall for some reason but intended to return, otherwise Prince would have been stranded. The issue was probably gear related, but it's still unclear how two experienced climbers like Tim and Jason had such an avoidable accident. There are many unknowns about the accident. No one was able to see the moment the climbers began falling or the specific events leading up to it, but all we know is that on that day, two incredible climbers lost their lives. To this day, their memory lives on, on every rock of El Captain.